East Chicago Treasury Small Business Expo. Um, my name is Jamie Ree and I'm the Chief Procurement Officer for the City of Chicago. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to um, Treasurer Neely for all of the hard work that she does every year in putting this uh, event together and bringing a lot of resources for small business that otherwise you kind of have to go to place to place to get to. This is really a one-stop shop. So I think that her office um, does a tremendous job at that. And it's very important because it really dovetails into a lot of what we do in procurement. So the mayor's vision is very clear, that, our th that a thriving minority of women in the business community is essential in a world-class city. You cannot have a world-class city where the representation and the diversity is not present in the government and its contracting, and those directly benefiting from goods and services purchased by the city. So we are the contracting authority for the city of Chicago. Um, we have about 2,500 active contracts and roughly spend about $2 billion a year on goods and services. And that's everything from runways to dog food for the canine units at the police department, potholes, red light cameras, all kinds of good stuff. Um, our contracts range from $10,000 to $140 million. And the big ones, again, are those usually where we're getting federal funds to redo major projects such as a runway. We also, in addition to be, uh, um, being the contract authority, we also are the monitors of the program. And we do certification. So we will certify in our office for minority women-owned businesses, um, disadvantaged businesses, so that's where you have federal funding involved, um, ACDBE, which is the airport concessionaire, so those that want to do business at the airport need a separate certification, and then BEPD, which is uh, people with disabilities. Um, last year, 2013, of the city's entire spend, roughly 37% went to minority and women-owned businesses, and those are ones that are certified. So not, we don't count anyone that is not certified, because that way we are comparing apples to apples. So we will, um, we assess everything at the end of the year. Sure. What department are we looking for when we're trying to get Procurement. Thank you. Yep. Right here at the top. Department of Procurement Services. So we have lots of different ways that we stimulate the local economy in Chicago, and our certifications come from six counties. So it's not just the business located in the city, but we look at a six-county region um, in order to establish our goals for minority and women-owned business inclusion. Um, we have a locally manufactured ordinance that will allow us to give a bid incentive to bidders that utilize um, things that are made here in Chicago. So we want to make sure that if you're making something in Chicago, we are going to incentivize the um, bidding community to utilize your product. And if we're not aware of you, please let us know that you exist and come in and talk to us. Because again, um, as you're going to see in, in some of the things that we have out there, we buy just a little bit of everything. And they're large and small contracts. We also have a local business preference. Now this is different than things that are made in Chicago. We actually, if your headquarters is in Chicago, so if your primary principal place of business, the majority of your employees are located in Chicago, we will also give you a bid incentive at 2%. And that is for construction, commodities, and professional services. We want to make sure that we know that our Chicago businesses are paying taxes. They're creating jobs. So we want to make sure that they have a leg up when they're bidding against local or outside competitors. Um, in addition to even looking at what we buy, we want to make sure that the people that are working on projects actually are from Chicago or from the neighborhoods. Um, and uh, last year, Mayor Manuel passed what we call the Project Area Resident Ordinance. So right now, um, on all non-federally funded, when we talked, the DBE is for federally funded projects. Your M&W is for non-federally funded. So on non-federally funded, those are local funds to Chicago, Half of all of the hours worked on any construction project have to be done by city residents. So we track that by zip code. We track that by the certified payrolls that people bring um, that submit for invoicing. Last year, we further drilled that down and said, yes, half of that must be done from the Chicago area. But we want to make sure that the residents of a particular area where work is being done have a shot. 
So of that 50, we now require, and it's a requirement, that 7.5% of those hours are done by local area residents. And what we do is we define the area in a couple different ways. It could be the 77 community areas that Chicago has. It could be a ward. It could be a geographical, sometimes we divide the city into north, south, west, um, far south. So it, could, it depends on the type of bid. That's how we determine what the project area is. But we monitor for that as well. Um, we, uh, our program is probably one of the strongest in the country. I've talked to a lot of folks out there across the United States where affirmative action programs or programs that are designed to help minority and women-owned businesses based on race and gender, um, they've either eliminated them or they've been challenged and they've lost them. We're very proud here in Chicago that we've maintained not only a very strong um, participation level, but that it continues to grow every year and that we see more and more people participating in government contracting. One of the things that we, we did get challenged um, back in um, 07 or 06, we got sued on our construction um, and that we would exclusively bid uh, construction projects to minority and women owned certified firms. And we lost that challenge. And so we lost our ability in construction to what we call target market. So we restrict the bidding to only certified firms. We kept it in commodities and we kept it in professional services. So we were able to do IT pools with minority and women owned vendors only, um, architects, engineers. But when it came to construction, we weren't able to do that anymore. And so we had to get creative. So what we came up to with in response to that challenge and in response to losing that ability and watching our numbers frankly plummet, we actually came up with what we call the Small Business Initiative. And the Small Business Initiative is for construction and it's for projects under $3 million. And we exclusively bid to small business. So it's not race and gender based, it's based on size, um, which would survive a challenge. But we use the same size standards that it takes to be certified to qualify you as a small business. So if you're certified, you're automatically a small business and you need not do anything else. Um, to date, um, since we've uh, announced this, which is in the end of 2011, we've awarded um, 30 projects that have valued $50 million to small business, and that's prime level opportunities. So what we've done is we've taken the big guys out, and we allow small business to compete against other small businesses. Because trying to compete against the big guys, it's real hard. So we want those firms that have the capacity to serve as a prime to have a shot. And so that has been very, very successful. But we had some folks come into our office and say, you know, even competing against other minority and women-owned businesses certified, those are still some high standards. And if somebody is making 10 or $12 million a year gross, and I'm making three, but I could be a prime and I could do smaller projects, I don't stand a chance. And so we heard them, and what we came up with was SBI 2. And we said, okay, for $2 million and under, for very small projects, fencing jobs, roofing jobs, parking lots, rehabs, we're going to bid those to very, very small firms. And we took the size standard and we divided it in half. So now you have very, very small firms competing against each other for business, small firms, and then everybody else. So we have two separate tiers now. <coughs> And actually, I was going to say, most of the time when I talk about the DBE and the MBE, the feds, they don't allow us to do local preferences in, in federally funded projects. So you can't require city residents. You can't give the 2% for being a Chicago-based business in federally funded contracts. But the feds came in and liked our SBI program so much. And they said, you know what, we're going to allow you to do this with your federally funded projects. So we actually can take um, federal funds at the airport, CDOT, um, water, any federally funded projects are eligible for SBI. Um, one of the other things I, I constantly hear from um, small businesses is that um, it's feast and famine out there sometimes. So when you're on the contract and things are going well and it's a five-year contract, it's great. Then when it goes out to bid, perhaps you're not on the winning team and now it's famine. And you're tied to that one contract. And we want, just as probably money managers will tell you to diversify and put your funds not all in one bucket, 
make sure you're diversified. We want our businesses to do the same thing. And to that end, what we came up with is called the Diversity Credit Program. And here what we do is, for primes that do both public and private work, so primes that work for the government, but also may build condos on the side that are not related to any city business or any government business. What we've said is, for every $3 that you, as a prime, when you're doing private sector work, for every $3 that you spend using one of our certified firms, we will give you a dollar of credit towards a future bid when you bid with us. Because we want to incentivize you to, to use our firms, not just when you have to, but it makes good business sense. And we want you to develop those relationships so that when this contract, maybe you're not on that waiting team, you still have other work over here that will keep you afloat. So this is a very important program, and, and I would encourage you, those that do work as subcontractors with primes on government contracting, tell them about this. Because there's work that they're doing outside of government that you could be utilized for. And if they won't do it on their own, well, we give them, we give them a reason to, which is an incentive. Um, also, we, when we looked at our program um, under Mayor Manuel, we, we found that there was real, there wasn't an incentive to grow your business, being a certified firm. If you grew, you graduated, and you exceeded those size standards set by the federal government, you were out of the program. So success came at a price. It was all of a sudden you're out of the program. And, and sometimes firms would graduate, then they'd be right back in the program within, you know, a couple of years. So what we came up with is a program to give you a soft landing. And it's called the phase graduation approach. And what it does is for the first year that you exceed those size standards, we'll give you 75% credit on any contracts that you're on that entire year. The next year it'll go to 50, and the third year it'll go to 25, thereby giving you a soft landing and not destroying those relationships that you worked so hard to build with a prime now they're able to continue utilizing you and sort of phase you out and hopefully bring in someone else. And you're not just out of the program all in one day. So we also recently came up with a, a veteran's preference. And it's probably one of the strongest in the country. I've heard no other um, municipality or government that has a stronger veteran's ordinance than we do. For those that have served in our country, the mayor was you know, adamant that we do something um, to provide an incentive for our veterans. And so what we came up with is a, um, and, and at the same time creating an incentive, but not taking away from our minority and women-owned business community. Because when you look at, especially as it relates to subcontracting, there's also, only so much pie. There is a piece of pie. So if you take from here to give over here, that's concerning. So what we looked at was a different approach. And we thought to incentivize at the prime level. So we will give five percentage points, which is tremendous. Our local business, like I said, is 2%. This is 5%. And it can actually be combined with the 2%. Um, but if, you, if a veteran business will JV with a small business, certified minority women-owned business, we will give five percentage points on a bid. When I first came up with the 5%, I can tell you the lawyers in my office all said, oh my god, that's too much. I mean, they'll take the bid. And my response was, exactly. I mean, that's what we want. So they're going to take it from the big guys? Good. They should. And so it is a very hefty, very hefty um, bid incentive. And I would encourage you, as a small minority women-owned business, that you start looking for a veteran um, to team up with and, and somebody that does something similar to your field. Because this is eligible for contracts no matter the size and no matter the industry, so professional services, commodities, and construction. And if you need help locating a veteran, there are websites, both on the county, Cook County Certified Veterans, as well as the state of Illinois. Um, there are also some other groups that we work with, and we can help get you to the right place if you're looking to make those connections. Um, we also think that it's important for those companies that want to grow capacity and they have a willing partner that we that they have that opportunity. So we developed a, a BWBE mentor pro, protege program. Um, so we will allow up to five percentage points of a bid incentive for a prime that will take under their wing a small company and perhaps help them in those areas they need, whether it's estimating, back office support, 
payroll, helping them, you know, cover payroll, whatever the need is for the business, the agreement can be tailored to just that. So um, it is a very open-ended, um, we allow the parties to come up with that, but we stay involved from the beginning to the end, because we want to make sure that it's a successful partnership for everybody. So we meet with everyone at the beginning, we meet with and require quarterly reports both from the mentor and the protege as to how things are going, and then we meet with them halfway through and then at the end to make sure that it was a, a successful partnership. Um, we have lots and lots and lots of rules and regulations in procurement. And um, I'd be lying to you if I told you that we didn't. Um, and a lot of them, we have federal laws, we have state laws, and we have local laws, um, our ordinances. But we want to make sure that you are aware of what they, what they entail. And so what we have is on our website just a wealth of information. All of our contracts that we've awarded dating back to 1993 are posted online, so you can see who worked on what, you can see how much they were paid, you can see which subcontractors they used, how much credit they were getting, um, you can see all the retained parties on their economic disclosure statement. So there is a wealth of information to help you prepare if you're looking at bidding on an opportunity. There is information out there that will help you get ready for that bid even before it comes out. Um, so I would encourage you to take advantage of our website and actually we do teach um, about 15 classes uh, free of charge. And one of the classes um, that we have is called How to Navigate the DPS Website. Um, and that is taught by, and Victoria walked in, Victoria Wright is joining me. And Kathy, I'm going to embarrass you in the back of the room there with the camera. Kathy is our Director of Marketing, Outreach, and Public Affairs. Um, and so these two uh, really have done a tremendous job at boiling down the information that we have and we all know, but that we think is vital for you to be able to compete and win business and not get caught on something. Because the worst thing that can happen is you violate a law, you violate a rule, and you didn't know it existed. So it's our job to make sure that we write them all down and explain them and educate you, and then your job is to follow them. Um, this Wednesday, so hot off the press, so we have a class this Wednesday, and that's taught in uh, the City Hall. Yeah, that was City Hall on the third floor in the Bid Bond Room um, at City Hall. At what time? 2.30. 2 in the afternoon. So those of you that can make it, um, that's a great class. So again, it's going to take you all through everything we've talked about and even a whole lot more. You can fill out your, if you're not certified, you can fill out your application online. So there's a link to that. There's a chat room that we developed. It's an MBE, WBE chat room um, that you can use. It's the MBE forum, we call it. So Victoria will cover all of those areas and really give you some insight as to what tools are out there for you. Um, in addition, we have an alert system. So we have about 9,000 people that we communicate with weekly. And Drew, it's an alert system, so it's a constant contact um, mailing system that you can sign up. And then that's how we communicate with our vendors. So if there's a new class coming online, if there are, um, are new workshops, if there are symposiums. So we do three symposiums every year. Um, we have our construction summit, which will be coming up in January. Um, last year was our first ever. No, second. Second ever, so this year will be our third. And what we do is we bring all the agencies, federal, state, local, all our sister agencies together. So anyone with construction lays it out there. And it was billions of dollars worth of work that were laid out in advance of construction season starting. Um, we also host uh, yearly, and I think we're going to be on our fifth year this year, in May, um, we do here at the forum a um, joint uh, collaboration vendor fair with Cook County. Um, and we get, again, this is really we call it the reverse vendor fair because we bring all of our departments. So the Department of Planning and Development, Air, Animal Care and Control, uh, Department of Aviation, CDOT, Water. The county brings the hospitals. They bring the sheriff's offices there. So it is everyone there that is a subject matter expert that can help you figure out what it is they buy and if that's a good match for you. And then last year in July, this year in July, I'm getting ahead of myself, we had our first ever financial symposium. Um, it was a tremendous success. Mayor Emanuel came, did a, 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 a nice uh, kickoff to it. Hope to have that every year. But there we had some alternative lending institutions. We had, uh, Treasurer's Office was a big supporter of that. 
we had uh, financial institutions that came in and, and talked about micro lending and talked about different financing that they had, um, business plans. Um, so folks that needed help, you know, writing their sort of mission statements or their business planning. We had a lot of different um, vendors that were there to support. So that was, um, those three we will continue to do. So on the alerts, that's how we'll notify you of the exact date and you can pre-register. Um, one thing that we published, because I think it's vital for anybody to understand, is what does the city buy and when do we plan on buying it? Um, so we publish a forecast that goes out 15 months um, and tells everything that the city intends on buying. And it gives when we plan on buying it, subcontracting opportunities that we see um, in the bid, as well as an estimated uh, value. So sometimes it'll say this is between 10 and 20,000. This one is between 25 and 35 million. So you can get a sense of what exactly the bid is going to entail. And then what you can do is you can look at that bid, go and look at the contract that's on the line right now, and look at the exact scope. And chances are, we will update it, but it won't change all that much. We're still gonna buy and have the same needs. So it's a lot of homework you can do up front before that bid comes out, and you're scrambling trying to put a bid together in a week. That is updated quarterly, and I think it's coming out here pretty soon, right? Next couple of weeks. Next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it is online. And it also, every time we um, update it, we blast it through the DPS alerts that I talked about. Um, in addition, we are now um, getting into the modern age. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. So Kathy is uh, managing the Facebook account and actually has done a tremendous job at bringing in even other agencies. So while we are responsible for the city, we still have the PBC, city colleges, CPS. Kathy is bringing in as many of those large bids that we can on our Facebook uh, page so that you can sign up here and kind of keep your eye on what's going on throughout procurement throughout the city. So we would encourage you to, to sign up for that. Um, I believe that's all I have for today and I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Our booth is where? H6. H6. Oh, is there another slide? Oh. There you go. Look at that. Great. Okay, so um, Victoria, all these different programs that we've talked about, so the Venture Protégé, the Local Business Practice Ordinance, all these um, hiring um, different programs we have are all on one CD and they all have one pagers with all the rules and regs. And Victoria has CDs today that you can take with you and print off whatever you need. The buying plan is on there, there's a compliance guide, lots of information that will be helpful for you. So Victoria will pass those out. Then also there is the card, a postcard, that has how to sign up for the DPS alerts so that you can make sure you're getting those weekly. Um, also, every Monday, I should say, we send out two good DPS alerts. We send out what bids are on the street right now, so that you know this is out today. And you can download a lot of them right from our website, right from there. Um, the forecast, the buying plan, will go out until 2015. That's what's to come. But what is on the street right now that you may want to bid on, those come every Monday. And those are on your website, your from pyramid website that you might go over? Those are on, uh, yes, everything is on our website. Okay. Everything is on our website. Any other questions? Great. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'll stick around. If there's any questions, please don't ever hesitate to call upon us. If we can help you in doing business with the city, we really look forward to working with you all. Thank you. So I, I have to say, it's hard. she's a hard act to follow, our, our commissioner, Jamie Reed. Um, so, but thank you very much. And I wanted to just get a quick feel of who was in the audience. How many are small business owners, or business owners? Perfect. Others represent not-for-profits or business organizations? Yeah. And who is everybody else? <laughs> yeah? An entrepreneur in the making. That's great. That's great. Um, so uh, we are on the, we share the same floor at City Hall on the 8th floor and the reason we do that, I mean ultimately what the mayor says is, you know, the bus stops here with us. We're all, we all work together and we clearly know that our success is dependent on the success of the business owner. And so one of the things that the mayor is very committed to and he always says is, City Hall should be a partner not an obstacle to business. And so that's what Commissioner Reed constantly talked about is, we listen to what businesses want and say, you really need to look at this, you really need to look at that. 
And so that's actually, I would say, really the credit of Mayor Ron Manuel, who says we need to be in touch all the time with what businesses want. So to do that, you know, one of the complaints that we heard is there's two folds. One is how do we make sure City Hall really is a partner at City Hall? And then how do we continue to support a business owner in the community once you get your license? So we did reduce the number of licenses by 60%. I mean, when you come in as a business, you think, I need one thing. And before you know it, you're like, how did I get four business licenses? So that was crazy. So we have now, we reduced it by 60% and it's a two-year license. So the and, the other nice thing is 93% of our people renew online. So ideally, you don't have to come back, right? Um, the other thing is we redid our website completely and it was professionally translated to Spanish as well. And that's really important because almost 50% of the new business licenses that we issue are to the immigrant community. And so we really needed to be responsive to that. And when we changed our website, we no longer started using acronyms, you know, that we know but businesses don't know. Sometimes I would hear, I just want to get a license and I really can't figure out all these things. I mean, can I just, can you just tell me how to get a license? What do I need? So we changed that. Um, restaurants, we would hear it takes months to open. And the inspectors would come in at different times and they were never coordinated. Like, literally, one inspector would say, you should put the table here, fire would come, no, you can't do that, you have to put it over there. Oh, you should put the sink here. So now they all come in at the same time, and the owner schedules them. And the owner can say, I'd like a rough inspection first, before I get the official inspection, just to get guidance on, am I doing this right? So that's a big deal. And what it does, at the end of the day, is it reduces the start time from, you know, how long it takes on the administrative side to actually opening up your business. So you can actually open up the business in like 35 days if you're a restaurant, which is a huge deal. A little bit more for liquor because it requires public notice. Um, the other one is, the other complaint that we heard is we are waiting too long just to see a business consultant. That's ridiculous. And so if we want to run this like a business, we need to treat you like our clients, right? And as a client, we know that your time is money. So what we did is we did it, we analyzed why are people coming in, what do they need, and from that we actually opened up an express lane. And 25% of the people that do come in actually are taken care of in 15 minutes or less. And we monitor that regularly. And the overall wait time was reduced in half. So that's great. I got I've got my license. Now what do I do? How do I get support to continue to grow my business? Because that's the other challenge is like the license, okay, great. But now, now what else is out there? So the city actually supports and pays chambers of commerce throughout the city. We actually pay 85 chambers of commerce. And those chambers of commerce range from Women's Business Development Center to the law project to help business even think about what kind of legal, um, legal structure they should establish. Or sometimes, like, I need help reviewing a contract. So those are the different things that are available. But the other thing that they do is they connect you to other businesses. And the Chambers of Commerce are also good at, sometimes you need some help on, you know what, can you have somebody help me on social media? So we actually give them targets on what they should do. And so these are just a couple of the targets. Like we tell them you have to have a special event. You, we want you to have business legal clinics where they can talk to businesses one-on-one. -on -one. And talk to the businesses on a one-on-one -on -one basis, on a consultative basis. And we actually train them on how to do intake. It's not like, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? No. It's a little bit deeper of a dive. So we've got wonderful partners that are in the community. And a list of all Chambers of Commerce are on our website as well. So it's really easy, cityofchicago.org backslash SBC. So here's a couple just innovative projects where they raised their hand and said, you know what, we'd like your support, City of Chicago, to support us with our businesses in the community. So in Rogers Park, they actually came to us and said, we have a farmer's market where 1,500 people go all the time. Can you um, help support a business, a restaurant incubator where, number one, the business owners don't need to pay for a, rest, a place to cook their food? Two, they can test market at, at the farmer's market. So we, we sponsored that program. Um, and so it was a nice restaurant incubator. The businesses, really what they commit to is their time. You know, and it was just an idea, as you have, sir. They said, I have an idea, I'd like to test it out, and they, they guide them through how the packaging is, the price point, everything. The next thing is, in Chatham, 
that we've got a great partner, Chatham Business Association. What they noticed is 80% of their businesses were still using faxes. This is like a year and a half ago. So they said, we need to stop this because we want our businesses to succeed. These are businesses that have been around for over 10 years. Their average was 15 years in business. So they were doing well. They're like, what's the problem? I like faxes, you know? And so we said, let's get you a social media presence. And so they also said, we've got a lot of youth that are tech savvy. So they trained their youth on business skills. And then the youth were sent out to the business community. So they got a job because they were paid through the program, the youth. And the businesses got a young person who was really savvy. Let me show you how to do it. It wasn't like I'm doing it for you. So these were, and these programs are being replicated throughout the city. Because we like to do is, we have a good model, let's build this throughout the whole city. And then there's a gazelle, it's a business incubator project. Um, and they're really working on, we see growth in certain businesses. How do we, they partner them up with a bank, they partner them up with another business who is in the light industry and said, how can we help your business grow 20% in two years? So they have really targeted markets. So they've got a good program. The other thing is that I, we noticed there's a lot of special events, but we wanted special events in every neighborhood in the city. Every neighborhood. Not where you have one in one neighborhood every single weekend. So the mayor's big on every neighborhood needs to have the same kind of opportunities. And so we trained groups um, all chambers of commerce on how to hold special events in every single neighborhood. And so we noticed there was an increase of 50% of more special events in 2014. So that's, that's big because what it does is it drives people into the neighborhood and more foot traffic and more businesses, more, more business. So the next thing that we heard from businesses, I like some money, right? I need money to help grow my business. And so we actually, through a campaign, through Kickstarter, what we do is we have a program called Seeds Chicago. Now, two weeks ago I was in D.C., and five different cities said, we heard about Seed Chicago, we're, we're copying you guys. Um, just don't tell your mayor. And we say, absolutely, that's the best um, compliment ever. Um, so what Seed Chicago is, is as a business, if you have an idea, and I put these two on here just as an example, Justice for Pies, she was, um, she just wanted to have, she just made pies, and so she had a campaign for um, $7,000. Sometimes you have a campaign for $30,000, $10,000. Basically, you have an idea as an entrepreneur. You know what I'm, a uh, lady who does hair weaving, she needs to buy equipment. So another person who had, wanted to buy a sink for their restaurant. Somebody else just said, I'd like to do some murals outside my building. Literally, it's like at all levels of an idea, anywhere from 5,000 to 30,000 people have just raised. This is free money. This is just equity in your business. And what happens is, what we noticed is, people come into Acción, one of our micro lenders, and they say, I'd like a loan to maybe start a food truck. And they say, how about if we do part loan and part of Kickstarter campaign so that you don't have to pay that back? So the difference of having it under Seed Chicago is that one, we coach you on how to have a campaign, because it is a marketing campaign for your business. It is a marketing campaign for your business or your idea. You don't have to actually have your business license. It could just be an idea. It, you know, Some communities have said, we want to transform some of these vacant lots into a garden. And they do a Kickstarter, and they do a Seed Chicago campaign. And these are on a national platform, so you do, do get access to national funders. And so literally when it says here how many people they reach their goal, so you have to reach your goal. It's 30 days only, that's it. So in 30 days, you will get your money. If you're a dollar short or a penny short, you don't get any of it. Yeah, so we at the city, we also push it. We do a lot of social media to help push it to make sure you do reach your goal. Um, so we're, we're, this is the food incubator. That's how they started, it was just an idea. And then the city also supported it. So that's one part, that's a great way to get free money, yes. Yes. Yeah. Action through Action Chicago. We partnered through. We started it at the city, at World Business Chicago, and then now um, through a grant from Miller Coors, we've transferred that over to Action Chicago. We did that because people, you know, would come in asking for loans, and we thought, let's find a way that we can not burden a new business with loans and have a Kickstarter campaign. 
So we have one happening probably every two months, and it's only for 30 days. So one is going to be launched next week. And we've got a couple in the pipeline, and it's good to be in the pipeline because literally what we do with Xion is we'll coach you. All right, how do we do a nice video for you? How do we do all sorts of incentives? Because this is also an opportunity to shine for you. So we want you to be successful. So the other thing is from businesses, what we heard is, I'm really good at my business. Um, and now these are two businesses that went through Goldman Sachs program. The mayor actually was very adamant about getting Goldman Sachs to do, essentially it's, boot, it's a boot camp for small business. Are there any Goldman Sachs alum in the audience here? All right. What's your business? Uh, total event resources. How did you like it? It was awesome. It was awesome? How did you hear about it? Uh, actually through the WBDC at the mm -hmm. Women's Conference. Great. So essentially, uh, you chime in and tell me if I'm saying it wrong, but it's a boot camp for entrepreneurs. It's free, um, but it is a huge time commitment because you are making a commitment to your business. Um, Commissioner Reese speaks at it, and really it's like you do accounting 101, contracting 101, marketing 101. It's not a business plan where you take a business plan and you put a shelf on it. No, it's a, you create a new and better business for yourself. And this examples, these two examples that we have here, you know, Ken Coates, he grew his business almost 300% just by being in this program. And Elizabeth Gallone, and this is in six months after finishing the program. These are not outliers. This is a common story that we hear all the time from people that go through the program. Um, and again, it's free. You only have to have 250,000. They are here in the booth. So I would highly recommend that you stop by and visit. I don't know their booth number. Um, but it, yesterday I, I spoke at, a, at an event. Five bankers came to me and said, you know, you're right about that Goldman Sachs stuff. My business, the, my clients I have that went through it, their business is just skyrocketed. Oh. Is that my, my sign? You got to go. You have to go. That's the modern way of saying the shut up box. <laughs> But I want you to know as an entrepreneur, these are resources that frankly the mayor has brought to the city. They're free. And literally, for everything, sometimes you want to write down a web address, literally Goldman Sachs 10,000 Chicago, if you Google that, it's the very first thing that pops up. The next one is microloans. So then the reality is, okay, I've got, I'm out, I'm done with my friends, I'm done with my family, I've done see Chicago, I still need more money. Um, and when you're a business owner, when it's a small dollar amount, sometimes it's not, it's actually pretty hard to get a business loan. And so the mayor, uh, with the partnership with Citibank, Citibank actually funded the training of, three micro, of two additional micro lenders, Women's Business Development Center and Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives. So they were trained on how to be micro lenders. Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives now is a CTFI, so they even have much more money to lend. Um, so now we have three micro lenders. In addition to being trained, you know, it's great that you're trained, but if you have no money to lend, it doesn't mean anything, right? So the mayor first did a million dollars. This year in 2014, he said, it's so great, I need to do one more million dollars, and partnered actually with the city treasurer. So 500 came from the city treasurer's office and 500 from the city. So we've got two million dollars that are out in the street with these three lenders. Acción, Women's Business Development Center, and Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives. And to give you a feel of the impact, at lending a million three, 80, 78 percent of the loans were under ten thousand dollars. And these are businesses that were around for over five years. So these were very small but meaningful loans, um, and they made the difference of I need payroll or I don't. Because these are businesses like one lady said, I've been around for twenty years, and all of a sudden. These major companies went from paying me in 15 days to 90 days. You know, and so it's, these are, these are hard. These are just two examples. And, you know, as you can see, these, you know, these people that have a couple of employees and they're making, it makes a big difference. So I know um, Women's Business Development Center, they've got a booth at B5, Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, C11, so, and they have money to lend. Um, and their loans close within two weeks. So if you're, I mean, if you're interested, it's, it's a great way to get, for those, those are up to $25,000. Um, Acción goes now up to $50,000.
But the other thing I want you to know in terms of accessing capital, I mean, the mayor is always listening to what else is needed. So literally in this, in, in February, no, sorry, in September, what we launched was something called Capital Access Centers. And we launched Capital Access Centers because businesses um, said, I mean, essentially they said, like, you go to a bank, you're rejected for a loan. Or they say, we can't do it. Then now what? Who's there to help you? And so the Capital Access Centers, they, you know, they're really going to have three main goals. The three main goals are prepare you as a business owner for successful borrowing. These are all three services. Second one is really connect you to the right source. Because sometimes you go to your neighborhood lender, they might not do your type of lending, your type of business. And then the other one is support you through the ongoing process because even once you do get your loan, you still might need help on cash flow management. There still might be other things that you need. And so what we did is, um, we, we're starting this as a pilot for 2014. Everything we do, we start as a pilot, see how it's successful, and then we scale it up to be citywide. But through this pilot, they can help you whether you're a member of the chamber or not. So Chatham Business Association and the Resurrection Project um, and Greater Eaglewood um, Development Corporation. So these are all organizations who are going to take you as a business owner, you know, prepare you for successful borrowing, connect you to the right source. So instead of you having to shop around trying to figure out who's the bank that's going to help me, it's their job to do that. Instead of you figuring out, do I have all my paperwork? Do I have everything I need? They're going to do that for you. And they're also going to connect you to not only what's the right resources for you in terms of getting capital, what are other resources that you need as a business owner? Because sometimes you, you know, we've heard from businesses that say, I feel like I need a degree on getting resources. You know, like, there's all these things that are out there, but how do I, like, how do I know what's the best thing for me? And so that's their job is to figure that out. And so they do, well, they will ask you a lot of questions. Um, and then from there, you have a path. And more importantly, you have an advocate. Like somebody who's on your <laughs> side, and like they know, and we're looking at how they're doing. And like, hey, we know, you know, how, where are you taking this business owner? Because that's really, because you're good at what you do, and we want other people to make sure that what your talent is, you know, grows. Because at the end of the day, what this means is that we don't have vacant lands, and we don't have vacant lots, we don't have vacant lands, we have thriving neighborhoods. And that's, at the end of the day, what all of this means for both of us, is that we have a vibrant city, and you as a business owner are successful. So, um, I will tell you, our booth, Business um, Affairs and Consumer Protection, is at H8. Uh, I also want to tell you about like one other really quick opportunity. Anybody here do retail products? Like, yes? Great. So Whole Foods is opening up in Eaglewood. And what we are doing is Whole Foods actually agreed to do a workshop series in Eaglewood um, where, one, we're going to do classes, like really high-touch, high-level classes on coaching in terms of business licensing, you know, how do you access capital, product safety. We're going to do a three workshop series. The first one's October 24th, and then the third one is January 23rd. And on January 23rd, you're going to meet with Whole Foods buyers, one on one, and really give them the pitch. This is what I have. This is, you know, what I'd like to have it be selling in your, I'd like to sell in your store. And this is Whole Foods saying, stepping up frankly and saying, we want to do business with Chicago businesses because we're going to be in Eaglewood and we want to make sure we create a bigger impact in the, in the neighborhood. So the first one's October 24th. You do have to RSVP to go. Sub to me easy email. It's greateringlewoodcdc.org. So you do have to register. We have all this information at our booth. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're both here if you guys have any questions. And we also have, a, hopefully, a wonderful booth that you have a great experience in. <laughs> but I, I will tell you that we can't emphasize enough that you really should have every single person that is here at the booth because this is an opportunity where it's all about you. 
Like today, it's like it's like the spa day for businesses. <laughs> it really is. It's the spa day for businesses where you're going to get pampered, and it's all about like what can I do to make sure you're successful. And so take advantage of every single person that's here. Really, that's why we're here, to make sure that you have, you're successful as a business. Take advantage of your side.